Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part four of our Unity series on creating a point-and-click adventure game. So in our last video, we got our camera positions set up, as well as our colliders to uh, take in mouse clicks. However, we kind of ended with a little bit of a problem, and I'm going to quickly show you that again here. If we go, um, I'm going to click Room so we can see all of, all of our colliders and that in here. I can click on the table and that will move us to the table, but then when I try to click on either of the props, I can't get to them. And the reason for this is that as we see here, the um, table's collider is completely surrounding both of the props colliders so that our clicks never get through to them. They're just, they're just bouncing off and hitting the table's collider. So we need to make our uh, node network a little bit smarter in what we're doing here. We need it to be able to say, oh, I'm at a current node. I should probably turn off that node's um, collider since I don't need to go to it anymore. And in the same way, what, what's nice about this is what we'll, how we'll set it up is that if we're, say, you know, several nodes away from a given node, um, those far away nodes don't, don't need to be on either. So we're going to kind of do this enabling and disabling system so that we're really only um, interacting with stuff that is really relevant to where we are in our game. So let's uh, turn this off and dive right in here. So to start, we're going to need some sort of overarching code that's going to kind of keep an eye on what's going on in the world. And uh, usually our best bet for that is uh, some sort of game manager. So I'm going to create an empty, name it game manager. I'm going to bring it right up to the top of our hierarchy because it's going to be a pretty important um, object for us. And down here, I'm going to create in our scripts folder a C Sharp script called Game Manager. I'm just going to drag that up onto, if it'll let me, I have to let it compile first. Drag that up onto Game Manager. Come on, buddy, you're going to do it. There we go. Now we can open this up in MonoDevelop. I'll zoom in here for you guys and we'll full screen it. So our game manager um, really is just going to be right now responsible for one thing. It's pretty simple. It just needs to track which is the current node. So we're going to do two simple things here. First we can add that in because that'll be very quick and all that needs to be is say public node current node. Secondly, we need um, a way to talk to our game manager. And we could wire it to every single object, but that would take a lot of time and be very inefficient. So we're going to make a um, static reference to our game manager. So we're going to say public static game manager, game manager INS for instance. And then we're going to create an awake function, void awake. ints equals this. So when our scene starts up, we're going to make sure that the game manager knows that it has the static reference to itself so that we can call that from any script that we want to. Now this is a very bad way of writing a singleton. Um, I would recommend looking up any other singleton tutorial. I'm going to, going to write it here, very bad singleton, but it will work for our purposes right now. Singleton, not singleton, but it will work for our purposes right now. So we're just going to save that and close that out. What's really important here is that we're now going to have access to this current node. So in our node uh, script, we are going to now say that when we click on the node, not only do we want to go to it or send our camera to it, we want to define it as the current node. And so our best way of doing that is we can do it right here in our on mouse down function, but our mouse down function is starting to get a little bit busy. We're also going to be adding to this the fact that we're going to be enabling and disabling colliders. So it's probably best that we kind of put all this into its own function rather than just having it here where it's, I mean, it, it'll work there, but it'd be nice if that was all put together because it's all related to the common goal of going to that particular node. For that reason, I'm going to create a new function called void arrive and it's going to happen when we arrive at this node. And so in here, we're going to do four things. We are going to set current node. We are going to move the camera. We're going to turn off our own collider. 
but we are going to turn on all reachable nodes colliders. So setting current node, we can now do because we have our game manager. And we'll say game manager dot ints, because we've got to get that instance, dot current node equals this. To move the camera, we're actually just going to steal this script right here. We're going to cut that out of there, drop it in here. And so now this will move the camera. Before I forget, I'm also going to, we still do want to use the on mouse down function um, so that when we click on it, we're going to do all of this stuff. So we're going to throw in here, arrive. And so that will call this arrive function when we click on the nodes collider. Now we want to turn off our own collider as we've discussed. So for that, we can just say, well, we do want to make sure though that we have a collider first, because if you um, recall back to one of our first videos, waypoints aren't necessarily going to have colliders at all. And we might have other nodes that don't have a collider for some reason. Maybe they just react to other nodes for some reason. So in order to um, double check that, we're first just going to quickly say if call, short for collider, that's our um, collider reference up here, if call equals or does not equal null. So if it, if it does not equal null, it exists. So if it does not equal null, then collider.enabled equals false. So we're going to set it to false. We're going to turn it off. Now, likewise, we've got our list of reachable nodes up here, and that's what we're going to want to uh, make those we do want their colliders on. So here we're going to say for each node we'll just call it node in reachable nodes. So for every node in this list, and you can name this whatever you want, but node is simple and makes sense for what it is. For each one of those, again, we're going to check if they have a collider. There might be a waypoint in there for some reason. If collider does not equal null, then, col then oh, sorry, if node.collider, because we don't want to check our own collider, we want to check the collider in the node. So if node.collider does not equal null, then node.call.enabled equals true, because these we do want on. Okay, so now we have it set up so that when we go back to our scene, we should be able to say hit play, and then when we click on our table, we should go to our table, which we do. And we see here now in the game manager, the current node is the table. And in addition, if I click on the room, you'll see here that this, um, this dome around the table is now a little bit darker than these two. That means that it's not currently enabled, which means that we should now be able to click on either of these two objects and we will move to them. So just like that, we now are at our um, now we are now at our cube, and again we see that the cube um, gets um, gets disabled as well. Now we can't click on it any further. However, there's still a little bit of an issue here because if we look at our cube, um, it doesn't have any reachable nodes, and yet looking at our sphere, we'll zoom in here, we see that the spheres collider is still on. So if this were in camera view, we'd be able to click on it and go to it. And that's not what we want. We want it so that basically if any given node isn't accessible, we want it to turn off its collider, whether that means that it's not near us or that it's just, you know, not one that we want currently accessible. So we need to add one more step to this. We don't just want to track when we're arriving at a node, we want to track leaving a node too. Because what, what basically should happen is when we leave this table, whether we're leaving to go to one of these props or we're leaving to go to a completely different section of the room, any reachable nodes, any children of this should be turned off as well. So we're gonna add one more quick function down here and it's gonna be a leave function. This one we're gonna make public and you'll see why in just a second. Public void leave. And basically what this is going to do is we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run through 
all of our reachable nodes. So I'm going to copy this actually and just paste it in here because we're doing the same general idea. In fact, I'm even going to copy this comment and say, but we're just going to say turn off all reachable nodes colliders. And so because we're changing this turn off, all we're going to do is change this to false. And so now what that does for us is says when you leave this node, all of the reachable colliders should be turned off. Now they might get turned on again depending on where we're going. Whoops, Unity really wants to jump in here and be seen. Um, which is okay because there's certain cases where say, you know, we're going to be leaving, say we're at the table and we're going to this sphere and this sphere does have the blue cube, which is a reachable node. So we'll turn off the blue cube as we leave the table, but then we'll just turn it right back on when we get to the sphere. That's fine. So what we, all we need to do now is go back in here and add in our arrive, before we set the node to our current node we're going to, we just need to turn off or leave the current, current, current node. So leave existing current node. And that is as simple as saying game manager dot ints dot current node dot leave. Save. So now what we should see here I come in here again, we'll hit play. And we start off, we're just in our scene. And I click on the table. And we don't have an object reference set to an instance of an object. What is, oh, I guess we have a little bit of a surprise here first. That's always fun. Oh, I know why. Uh, when we first start the game, there isn't a current node. So we do need to do a quick check here and say, if this, if this current node does not equal null, so if, basically a roundabout way of saying, if there is a current node, then we can leave it. Otherwise, just don't do anything. That is fine. So now we can go back here, stop this, let it recompile, and we'll play. Now, when we click our table, we should move to our table. And that works and that turns off this collider and so now like I say because the blue cube does not have any reachable nodes when we go to the blue cube we should turn off our sphere so let's see if that happens if this turns a darker green we've done what we need to do and it does both of them do in fact because this one's the current node and this one turns off as well so that's exactly what we want from this we wanted to say you know right now this isn't a reachable node so there's no reason for its collider to be on Hey guys, forgive the jump cut, but I wanted to uh, jump into our play mode once more for this video and quickly show you guys how the game works when we go to the sphere. And the reason for that is that the sphere has the blue cube as a, as a reachable node. And so when we click on it, we'll be clicking away from the table, which will turn off the blue cube, but then it should turn right back on. And that's really the purpose and the main crux of this intelligent network. So let's try that right now. Um, I'll click on the blue cube so we can see its collider. So we click to the table and the collider is active as it should be. And then if we click on the sphere, it should stay active or appear to stay active. It'll actually be turning off and turning right back on. And sure enough, it is. So that is that is really the effect of what this um, intelligent network can do for us is it really keeps track of this is my current node. This is what should be active and making that active. So in our next video, we're going to look at doing some uh, animation and getting into some kind of the fun stuff of, um, you know, navigating around this world and um, seeing what's in the world. And for that, we're actually going to be using um, an asset from the asset store. So we'll get a little bit into installing those assets, as well as using um, the uh, documentation of that asset to make it really easy to tween our cameras and eventually other things as well. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.